there is a distinction, I think, between just simply drawing fouls, which Joel is going to do every single night, right? He's a big dude. Very few guys can guard one-on-one. Naturally, he's going to draw a lot of fouls. But I think over the last probably two, three years, as he has risen from all-star, but not that like that guy yet, quote-unquote, to yearly MVP guy, some of that has come with he has tried to manufacture free throws more. And I think that's been a big part of his regular season success. I don't necessarily think that that is like the the big impediment but standing between him, the Sixers, and a finals run. But there was a discussion in the Discord that came out of that where one of our loyal readers and listeners said he has to stop that in order to win a title. There have been no players who are known for the over-the-top foul drawing stuff. And I, so I would put someone like James Harden, Joel, yep. Luca, I yeah. think, is in that category. And he just went on a finals he run last year. Finals. A, a really big, successful run. I think sneakily, Shea Gilgis-Alexander is another one. I love Shea. I love how he plays. But that's well, there's a lot of grifting in him, too, that I think as he stays at this high level, people will pay attention to it. So we wanted to expand that into, you know, what needs to change? Does anything need to change? And we can just start here, Devon, I guess. As you look at that specific thing, that the rip throughs, the the pump fakes to get guys to lean, the sometimes, and we saw it in FIBA play, which you brought up earlier, there were some moments early in the scrimmages and pool play where he had openings that he didn't take to try to draw a foul. Like there was one on Jokic, I believe, in pool play where had the baseline, could have just gone for a layup or a dunk and instead try to spin back into Jokic and draw a foul. Refs didn't give him one. So I guess where are you at on Joel's foul drawing tactics in general? And do you think it's a problem at all or what needs to change about his habits? And there? by the way, you mentioned Shea Gilgis. I'll add Jalen Brunson in that too. Yes, because that absolutely. Got a lot That's of that. a gr- he is and, higher than I think Shea on, on yeah. that front. And, and again, when does it start to be critiqued in the same way that Luca has done it? And of course, Joel and B. But for me, as you talk about it, taking it back to the Olympics, because this would be something that this is part of the reason why Kyle and I, when we did the watch along for the Serbia game, where we had our little back and forth because Kyle thought it was a foul. I agreed with it that it was a foul, but he didn't play through it. Mm-hmm. And that was the discussion. Kyle was like, give him the foul call as you are absolutely correct. But he's conditioned because of the way he plays to expect that that call. Even if he was playing pickup in the Rico Hines games out there in Los Angeles, he's going to do it and expect the call in that Rico Hines run in at UCLA. So for me and watching him and watching him over the years, I think it's I think it's a skill, just like Kyle talked about. If you can do it and you can get away with it and you can be rewarded the way that he has. You do do it because not only does it put your team in a good spot, it also puts the team that you're playing against in a really, really tough position because of the foul situation that they are going to be into very quickly. So if it's foul baiting, absolutely. But it's also a smart part of it just because I'm going to get your front court in trouble here now. And I'm also going to get some of these other guys, these guards that come in and they dig in and they start to reach. They start to pick up these fouls and you have to go deeper into your bench. That's also going to help us out. So I think it is something that works out for the Sixers and Joel Embiid because it's you're taking advantage of something in the rule book like we talk about. So for the people who are also want to be Sixer fans and bring up how Sam Hinkie took advantage of a little thing in the collective bargaining agreement that you can take advantage of, that's the same thing that the player does out there. So I don't mind it when Luka does it. I don't mind it when Joel Embiid does it because if I had the ability to do so, I would do that too. It's not like we're going to sit there in that commercial where the guy fouls and he goes into the huddle and he tells his coach, coach, I didn't do it. You do it. <laughs> I hate that damn commercial. Right, I know you do. Competitive. <laughs> Kyle Newbeck, surprise everybody. <laughs> right? So you do it. And if it works, you go ahead and do it. Now, sometimes it does save him a little bit for exerting certain amount of energy. The bad part in, in turn is, are you, are you going to have guys, which we know this is part of the argument, are you going to have teammates just standing around because of it happening? When Paul George, and I'll bring it up again probably for the second time this week, when Paul George at his introductory press conference brought up, speaking to Nick Nurse, we don't want to have Joel isolated at the top of the key all the time doing the stuff that he does. It works, 
But you know what? It doesn't have to be that part of the game so much because of what he is so good at doing. So when I get frustrated and hearing people talk about it, it takes away from them giving him credit of the skill in general, not that skill, the rest of the skill that he has of the Euro step, the 15 footer. That's a layup to me based on his shooting percentage from that 15, 17 area where he just knocks down that jump shot so easily. And all the other good things that he does offensively, it just takes away from from everybody recognizing his greatness because he is a great player and people should talk about him as such. And we shouldn't have these arguments about he and Nikola Jokic, who's better, who's not, and picking apart their games because it's something that he does that he can do because nobody can stop him. He's a big guy. They have to figure it out. And for all the people who just want him to play back to the basket, turn around, jump hook, and I said I want to see a little more to the jump hook because if he has that touch, really unstoppable. Mm-hmm. It's it, it. I like it. I think he should continue to do it, but I also think that now that he also has a player in the in the in the in the skill set of now Paul George with him, that it may not be something that he needs to do just as much because when the attention is on Maxi and George, and then the ball swings to him late as a third option, he can just go. And when we saw those plays in the in the Serbia game and then in the gold medal game for the brief time that he was out there, those quick decisions grab and go to finish the dunk where the Serbia coach was ticked off because he thought he traveled because he got by Jokic so quickly. Those are the types of things that we saw that makes us have this conversation here, though, of saying, I want to see a little more of that, too, because that's the easier way for you to get your points, get things going, get everybody else in the flow. And that double team is always going to come. That third, that third player is always going to be there, that defender to come over and help. And it's just going to make things so much easier for everybody else. So again, I like the fact that he does it because it is a skill that everybody is good enough at doing. I mean, everybody's not as good at doing it. And why not take advantage of it as long as it doesn't, as long as it's not a detriment to the rest of the team throughout. So here's what I, I, I mostly agree with you. The problem I think you run into is that it is mostly advantageous with the way the league officiates the regular season. Mm-hmm. And he has not properly adjusted to how it's officiated in the playoffs. And I think it's part of why it's not the whole reason why, right? Sure. We could go through yeah. all the injuries, the the surrounding personnel the two-way burden he's had to carry, whatever you want to say for the playoff struggles. I do think part of it is just that he doesn't respond quickly enough to, okay, they're not giving me that call, whether that's just tonight or whether that's for an entire series. There is not a purposeful enough change in how he's playing. I think that's an indictment of him mostly because it's not that this is the only way he can succeed. Right? If, if this was... If Joel had to get to the free throw line and that was basically his only skill, I'm going to score at the free throw line. I have to bully people and that's it. Then I would understand this. But because he has the mid-range game, the mid-post, he can step out and hit threes. He has become a a capable pick-and-roll guy. He can pick-and-roll and 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 pick-and-pop for that matter. He's a dribble handoff weapon, right? Like that's where he's most comfortable. We've seen him in Tyrese Maxey to say nothing of him with Seth Curry, him with J.J. Redick, like all the offensive success that comes out of those actions. Like there are so many things you can do with Joel Mm -hmm. and that Joel can use, whether it's him scoring or someone else, that you don't have to keep going back to that well where I'm going to jab step this guy eight times and try to get him to reach and use a rip through that frankly they don't really call anymore. They're not actually supposed to call it based on what the points of emphasis are. And then some of the other stuff around the basket, right? Like just... Go up with power, right? Force somebody who in most cases is smaller than you, whether that's height, whether that's weight, force them to either make the play or take the foul. Like it will happen naturally where I do sympathize with him. He probably gets fouled, let's say four to eight times per game that just won't get called, right? It's one of the disadvantages, I think, of big men in the NBA over the last, we'll say like 30 years or so, the Mm -hmm. league went away from, we're just not calling a lot of stuff in there, right? There was a time when every single touch foul anywhere, not the hand checking, but everywhere else is getting called. Now it's like, well, people don't want to watch that. They want a free flowing game. 
So if you're dumping it into Shaq 15 times in the first half, if he gets fouled 10, they might call five. Mm -hmm. And it's the same phenomenon that Joel has to deal with. So I understand his feeling like, okay, I need to manufacture some because they're missing a lot of these. And you can see his, if you're in the locker room with him, you can see the scratches, you can see him where he's been hit. You can see him certainly on TV or at games grimacing during games because he got slapped on the wrist, slapped on the thumb, hit in the shoulder, whatever it is. He gets banged on a lot, no diddy, in the post and down low. And that's just the reality of playing as Joel Embiid does. So I get the want to be at the free throw line more because you feel like you've earned that with all the other stuff. Maybe I should just get a few, we'll call them correct calls, but soft calls elsewhere. I just think once it gets down to playoff time, especially in the last five minutes of games, refs basically throw out the rule book, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. if you're not bleeding or it's not the most obvious foul in the world, they will not call it. And I think because of that, he has let games happen to him rather than impose his will. It's the way I've been thinking about it this summer as I watched him playing for Team USA. And I want, we all want to see Joel being the guy in those big moments, in a game six, in a game seven, to win the game because he just imposed his will on the other team rather than being reliant on, well, they didn't get anything out of Tobias Harris. Well, they didn't get anything out of DeAnthony Melton. At a certain point, you want to be like, well, so what? They have the guy who's been an MVP candidate every year. And so I think the foul drawing stuff, the foul baiting stuff, we should say, is somewhat connected to that. And I want to see at least a little bit of a mentality shift from him. 